Hello, my name is Terry Gilboy, and I recommend and highly support the Keith Andrew Network Show. I support it, and I, I believe he is doing a great cause. He's making awareness to everyone, not just to himself, but everybody with a disability. I believe you can do whatever you want. Follow all your dreams. Don't let anybody tell you you cannot follow your dreams. I'm a perfect example. Keith's a perfect example. And guess what? We're going to work together. And I am going to promote Keith on my films. So stay tuned. Gentlemen, you're watching the Keith Andrew Nowler. This is episode 647. That's right, 647. I'm here. It's a talented and beautiful Terry Gearboy. I just want to say thank you for being a guest on my talk show. Oh, thank you so much. I'm glad we finally connected. Yeah, the honor's on mine. For people who want to know what my talk show is about, the whole point of my talk show is to show people that even with having a learning disability, I can still amount to something. And at the same time, I'm able to turn myself into an example for people out there dealing with any types of learning disabilities and disabilities to never give up and prove people wrong. Prove to them that labels do not dictate who you are and who you're going to be. It's to prove to them it's still amount to something. So hashtag break the label. So that being said, half right. hour. 33 minutes of your time. Freedom of speech, freedom of self-expression. It's PG, PG-13, but you can say anything you want along those lines. Okay, and, wonderful. No, go ahead. <laughs> oh, okay, you want me to share a little bit about myself? Sure, did. so the first question I'm going to ask you is, what can you tell us about yourself? And we're going to ask some easy questions, some hard-hitting ones. You push on me, I push back. Let's, let's have fun with it. Okay, I'm excited. Oh, well, I'm glad you reached out. I am a stand-up comedian by trade turned screenwriter. So actually, I was a stand-up comedian for five years. And then I was uh, approached at one of my shows by a producer who uh, does films. And he inquired, he goes, you know, I love your storytelling. I was wondering, you know, I have a treatment here. Can you turn it into a full feature? I was like, wow. Never tried. Why not? Because I write my own uh, stand-up comedy material. And so I, I, we, went, we did it. We actually wrote it for like three years. It was, it was a very lengthy uh, uh, type of film, uh, animation. And I believe it's right now in the works. Was, see, I was, where I was a writer to hire, so and he's not really kind of attached to it kind of thing. But that was fun. And once I got a taste of that, oh, I was addicted. So, of course, that I threw myself into, like, classes, uh, writing classes, seminars, uh, open writing groups, uh, writing communities, and started writing my own uh, uh, short films and my uh, full-length features. And then what I decided to do is establish my own production company, Sir Rabbit Productions. So I established that just recently. Just hired a director to start working and uh, filming our uh, my shorts and my films. I'm really super excited. But now with this coronavirus, production, everything shut down for like 30 days. I'm sure you heard about that. No, absolutely. And we're going to cover that on the show. But let's just stay focused yeah. on the main goal right now. But I do have some ideas for you. Huh? And just throwing it out there, would you be interested in being a brand ambassador? A what ambassador? Oh, a brand ambassador. A brand ambassador. Oh, never thought, gave it much thought. Why not? What do you have in mind? Well, I'm looking to work with people. So maybe like I, I can promote your stuff and you can promote me. So it's a well, quick, quote, quote, quote. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, we could put you in the credits of the films. You know, you'll be, in, you'll, you'll be on screen. <laughs> <laughs> I would love that. We can talk about that off the air. Awesome. Oh, my God. I would so do that. <laughs> that would be great. 
<laughs> oh my god. Okay. No, I do have a couple no. of easy questions for you. <laughs> <laughs> so the first one I want to ask you is when you were in high school and high school and college, did you do any sports and were you a study nerd or party animal? <laughs> wow, let me see. Hmm. A little bit of both. Now I'm half Asian. I'm half Korean. I don't look it, but I do drive like one. <laughs> I admit. I'm that little Asian lady when I get behind the wheel. So, but that's okay. So my mother is, uh, she's from North Korea. She escaped from the North uh, and then made it to Seoul and then made it to the States. I was born and raised here. Uh, she's very, I was brought up in a very strict Asian culture. Um, it was academics, uh, you know, dance, art, music. So sports were not in the picture whatsoever. Uh, in the Asian culture, a woman doesn't do sports. You, you just you just don't do sports. So I never did a sport ever. I didn't have many friends because my mom was so strict. She chose my friends. So I was really a, actually a very shy child, uh, very introverted. But I was always making jokes. I was always making people laugh. And my mother, that, that, that's taboo. A woman, you can't show your teeth when you laugh. You have to laugh like this. <laughs> you, know, you, you know, and I would laugh like this. <laughs> you know, I'd be all over the map. And she'd go, Teddy, what I say? Cover your mouth when you laugh. You know, she'd kind of do that thing. <laughs> and then at college, uh, she basically sent me to college to be an art major. But I wasn't really into that either. I was at free thinker, that outgoing person. I wanted to do what I wanted to do, not what mom wanted me to do. Mom wanted me to go, you go meet a nicer man and you'll get married. You know? <laughs> do I have to? But anyway, she was so strict. It kind of carried over. But when I went away to school, I did not finish because I broke away and pursued my dream. I wanted to be that free thinker. I wanted to be that creative. I wanted to be my own person. I didn't want to follow what everybody says, what you need to do, what's right, what's wrong, fit in the box, be like everybody else. My imagination was just too, um, too out there. I used to babysit a lot and uh, because I would interact with the children. I loved, I loved children. And I wanted to interact with them. So we would play games. I would create stories and uh you know, back then we didn't have uh, computers like this and so forth. So everything was, we had to interact. And we would do this imagination, we would make forts and, and, and make up stories. And that's, I think, it stemmed since I was a child. And here I am today. Finally, my mom gave up in my adult years after, after my daughter was even born. She says, you know, Teddy, okay. I give up. You make people wrath, go make a people wrath. So... I did it. I jumped on it, and I took improv classes. I took uh, comedy classes. Uh, you name it, I did it. Once I did that, um, next thing I know, a lot of people were approaching me, and I was openers, like at the Brayer Improv, the uh, Irvine Improv, Ice House, Comedy Store, a lot of large venues. And then that's when I was introduced to writing. They did want me to start traveling, I, I guess, to to really promote yourself as a stand-up comic, they want you to travel. And, you know, I'm not into that. It was, It's not a glamorous life, you know, on the road. Uh, it just wasn't me. And so what I did is then when I was introduced to the screenwriting, and again, I gravitated towards it, and I loved it, and I latched onto it, and here I am. So I've been writing five years, again, studying it, understanding it, every aspect and now I was able to open my own production company. <laughs> yeah, I'm so happy for you. Congrats. Thank you. Thank you. And I, I can't wait to get started. We're in pre-production. But again, everything's on hold, so we can't get any permits for like locations and so forth. Can't even really cast anybody at this time either because, because of the lockdown. You know. No, I know we hinted towards this, but let's go to actually talk about it. With everything that you're trying to accomplish, and for me, for that matter, I'm in the same category, 
how do you feel about the coronavirus and how long do you think it's going to last? Oh, that's a great question. Um, you know, I've kind of, um, to be honest with you, I've kind of stopped really watching the news right now or the media or reading anything because it kind of does um, add a little panic, you know, a little fear. Um, I was out there just to go basic shopping. And did you see that? The people just grabbing toilet paper. I was just going crazy. It was like nothing on the shelves. And a good thing I'm already a stock. I, I stock. I'm just one of those people. People go, oh, you're just paranoid. Oh, I'm not prepared. I'm not paranoid. I'm prepared. So I already had a lot of food stocked as well. So I just was getting out the basics of like the toiletries. And uh, I'm pretty stocked, but it, it, it this does add panic. I think it's going to last a while, to be honest with you. I really do because of the panic. I really, I think it's going to last till maybe, okay, my prediction, mm, I'm going to say June. What's your prediction? I would say hopefully May. Okay, that works. Oh, good. We're right there, friend. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, <laughs> it's funny. You ever see um, Beavis and Butthead? Oh, yes. Oh, my God. I need TP so for my bun hole. I said, what? I need TP for my bun hole. <laughs> <laughs> I am the great honey hole. <laughs> they were awesome. Are they still playing anymore? They're just doing the reruns. I haven't seen it. I'm sure we could probably watch it and pull it up. It's probably on YouTube or something. Oh, I know. They were hysterical. How that guy, that guy, one guy would always laugh. He, can you do his laugh? I can't do his laugh. <laughs> I'm not good at it, but it's kind of like. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, my God. That's what I would do. I'm trying to. What I want to what I want to do is to uh, go into my job tomorrow wearing a thing over my head. It's like I need cheapy for my bun hole. I even look like a cut honey hole. <laughs> Let me grab you, somebody. <laughs> There's actually a comic I saw on Facebook. I have to find it again. Where it's like, well, yes, the, you know, they, they died from the uh, canola virus, but at least their butts are really nice and clean. <laughs> Right. Well, I was thinking of like ordering online one of those bidets. You know, people like ordering those bidets. Have you seen that? No. No. Oh my gosh. I guess you can get it. So I don't. Know, what was it? I think I. I think I saw an Instagram where you know they put those ads on there, and they're like, "Oh, you need to get this bidet." And I'm like, "Oh, oh my. Oh, okay. I was thinking about doing that, but now I think this is going to die down. I hope." I do Does too. Your neighborhood. Like everybody, like I'm going crazy because now the neighborhood's crazy because the schools are out here. Are the schools out? The kids, schools, kids, are, yeah, same yep. here. So it's hard for me to work because I, I work here from the office, and now I I'm trying to work and the kids are playing, which is fine. Don't get me wrong, I love it, but you know they're loud. So now what I've been doing during the shutdown, I'm waiting till it's all quiet at night and I'm working till like 3 a.m. typing. And that's kind of messed my head up a little bit. My whole, you know, sleep rhythm. That's messed me up a lot. But you got to do what you got to do, right? No, absolutely. Now, the next question is, what's some of your favorite short films are you working on? And what have you done so far? Oh, my goodness. I have many. And the director I hired... Um, now, I've inter I interviewed quite a few directors, actually. And I connected with... Uh, this one, and uh, she's she's awesome, and she's already done, golly, so many films as it is. She's working with Netflix. She's uh, just finished 130 episodes for Quibi. Are you aware of Quibi? I've been seeing uh, commercials for it. Okay, yeah, it's supposed to come out April 6th, and uh, so what we're doing is that uh, we're going to prepare all my little um, shorts. That could probably a potential, uh, I guess, series for a Quibi. So, and she uh, is already working with them. So, this is very exciting. Hopefully, they'll like it, and I'll be a part of Quibi. Wouldn't that be a dream come true? <laughs> no, absolutely. <laughs> Mike, can you imagine all the credits you'll be getting? Let me tell you. <laughs> you know, it's funny. There's this thing on Instagram. It's called Start Up Your Own Network. And you pay, you pay like two hundred dollars, and you're like, oh, we uh, work with Apple TV, Fire Stick, and 
Um, um, well, let's see, everyone. Um, Morocco. You know, I was thinking, oh, that's great. Oh, it's two hundred dollars, and I was thinking, okay, I can, I can try it. But then I was thinking, no one watches my crap on YouTube. Why the hell would I piss away two hundred dollars for something? That, okay, I'm doing it online. I'm, it's free. But now I'm paying two hundred dollars. Let me ask you this: Why would they? Why would I pay two hundred dollars so I can watch something on TV when you're not watching it on the computer or an iPad? So it doesn't make any sense. You're only throwing money away. Yes, yes, it is. I I look at it like um, it's like buying advertisement for yourself. You know, like a promo. Uh, that's kind of like I guess the the, the angle I would take. But uh, what is that website? Let me get that paper here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's um, I can't remember the full name, but it's like startup. Start up oh. a network or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I don't know if it's legit or anything, but I'm, that's what I was looking you, at. Yeah. But I, oh. if I find it again, I'll show you it. But for you, definitely, it's, you know, if you have the money and you have old... And since that's the same thing with me, you know, I have the episodes. I have the contact. The yeah. problem is no one wants to see it. Uh, certain episodes get over a thousand and there's some episodes that are like okay a hundred and but there's some episodes that are like 60 so I don't I would love to work with you because maybe we can come up with some great ideas but it's not YouTube is not working but if you go to my Facebook fan page it's over like a thousand oh. and in certain episodes you know it's like a hundred or two hundred three hundred it's like huh I guess people like Facebook more than YouTube why can I get that following? So the next question I'm going to ask you is social media. Can social media make you or break you with everything you accomplished in your life so far? Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube. You know, do those numbers dictate if people should work with you? You know, that's a great question. I've... Hmm. You know, I don't have... Uh... I don't really push myself on my social media uh, technically, but lately it's, it has been picking up. I think maybe because my fit, my writing is out there, uh, it has been pushed been pushed out there. So I actually am having people approach me in that area. But as far as social media, it's starting to pick up. But it's be I think it's because um, again, word of mouth. I think word of mouth may be old fashioned or maybe behind the times, but I still believe. Word of mouth is is the key, and social media with a combo meal. Now I've never, I've always had. Um, have you had those people that approach you or they send you a little message going, "Oh, for a fee, we can get you followers." Da da. I've never yeah. done that. No, I, I, I have. I tried it, and okay. I didn't pay them when they said, "Oh, well, you owe us money." I canceled it, so they froze my account. So I said, "You know what?" I'm going to earn my own people. I'm not going to give you $10 and magically get robot people to follow me. I want real people to follow me. Right. Exactly. Yeah. So I think I think word of mouth is, is, is still the key. And hashtags and, and, and so forth. And, and, you know, actually hopping in again. Like, again, hopping on. I'm, I'm building momentum. So I'm glad, I'm glad we met because... I'm building momentum, and I'm going to put you on my train. I'm like, let's go, Keith. We can do this together and get you out there because I think what you're doing is an absolute great cause. And I think if we work together, I think we will build a great clientele and a following. No, I would love that. Yeah, me too. Oh, God, I'm so excited that. <laughs> now, what, that. About, <laughs> <laughs> what about your like uh, numbers? Like For me, I have... Over 1,000 people on Facebook. I have 1,000 over Twitter. Uh, Instagram's over 1,000. YouTube, it's only 100 people. I don't know why, but that's my main focus right now. I've been promoting my YouTube channel. Make sure to like, subscribe. But for you, what format or program did you use very first? Said, you know what? I have something here. And I, if it wasn't for this website... You want to be doing what you're doing. That is very true. 
Um, I also attend a lot of networking. When I was first uh, starting out, I did a lot of the networking, uh, outsourcing, going to the different events and going to different networking. That's how, also how I've gotten out. What I did is I turned my uh, Facebook page. It was just for uh, I was when I was promoting my comedy. That picked up a lot of momentum. Um, but when I stopped, uh, I noticed everything kind of froze because I went to the writing uh, uh, direction. So what I did because of that, I only, and I, put in, I kind of notified all my friends that I was just going to turn my Facebook into a networking. So I only accept creatives like yourself, uh, producers, directors, actors, um, production companies. So I kind of got rid of my friends and the fan base, I guess you could say. And I shrunk it down just to uh, creatives. Now that took off hugely and I don't know how it just it got out really a big time and so now I I've been noticed more and more production companies and distributing companies are reaching out to me going oh well, what do you have I like to read some of your stuff and because uh, I stayed I'm only accepting uh, just uh, creatives to my Facebook that made a huge impact actually in the past two months I just kind of just decided to do that I didn't know it was going to take off like that no, absolutely, and I have two Facebook pages, and LinkedIn for that matter. I have my main one, and I have my throwaway. My throwaway page is where I just add random people, and once we hit it off and become friends to do the interview, then I add it to my main page. And like on LinkedIn, I have a throwaway page where I just randomly add people, and the same thing, once we do like a connection, there you are, now you're on my main page. Oh, I need to learn from you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I do want <laughs> my paper, my pen. I take notes. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> but I do want to take a quick commercial break, and when we come back, I ask you one easy question, and then we're gonna ask you about your acting and film writing. I'm Laura Menino. Hi, I'm Deborah Jensen. I'm Linda Collins. And Hi, I'm Marissa Joy Davis. This is Michelle Wong. And I'm Nancy Rose. My name is Brandy Hunt. And Hello, my name is Raven Wynn. Hi there, my name is Giovanna Vidal. Hi, I'm Monica Thomas. Hi, I'm Paisley Blackburn. I'm Ashley Burgess. Hi, my name is Jeanette Abney. Hi, I'm Sharon Spank. Hey, this is Samantha Moore. Hi, I'm Melody Jones. Hi, my name is Becky Yee. Hi, you're watching the Keith Andrew Network. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Key Fans Network. It is episode 647. I'm here. It's a talented and beautiful Terry Gilboy. I just want to say thank yep. you for sticking with us. Yep. Now, I'm going to ask you one of my favorite questions, but I always ask people. But uh, what my main thing is that I want to focus on your filmmaking and screenwriting. But the first one I'm going to ask you is what is one of your favorite things that you always wanted to do, but people always made fun of you for it. Writing children's book. Writing children's book. They did. Everybody, you know, people are not as supportive, you know, at all. And I, I've learned that the hard way. When you start gaining a little momentum or... Uh, pursuing a dream, it's 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 amazing that you find people who want to crush your dreams, and they say that a lot, and I don't know why. I I I think it's it's more positive energy, just a good feel, just to tell someone, God, that's great, go for it. You never know. My favorite quote is "Never say never," because never can show up, and sure enough, it showed up for me. I used to work behind a, a, an office desk. I worked behind an office for 17 years. A debt and insurance job for 17 years. I was going nowhere. I just paid the bills, you know. And, uh, and when my mother said, you know, I think you should pursue your dreams because you, you, you make people smile. I, I think you should pursue it. And that's when, I, like I said, I hopped on the train and, and I did it. And I remember when I quit my job and I told them what I was going to pursue those dreams You'd be surprised if people said, oh, you'll be back. You'll see. You'll be back. That's not going to happen. You know, just, it does, it does, you know, put a little damper on your spirits. I'm not, I'm not going to lie. You know, but then you start questioning yourself. 
But I, if you believe in yourself, and I've heard you and I've watched you, you're darn right. We can do this. And I told them, I don't think so. And sure enough, here I am. I've invested 10 years of my life in this uh, career in the industry. And I am now the boss of my production company and making films. So never say never. <laughs> no, absolutely. <laughs> I don't listen, don't listen, that's why I said, just don't listen to people. Pursue your dreams, keep your happiness, keep your positive energy around you, and hang out and be around positive people. That's the most important. And believe it or not, I've developed, a, I lost a lot of friends when I uh, started building momentum, because I didn't quit. I had a lot of comedian friends that all of a sudden are no longer my friends, and I, that hurt. That hurt, you know, and a lot of friends, too, that I've had for years, all of a sudden, no longer my friends, and I don't know why, and I guess that's called, that falls under the category of haters, they say, I don't want to say that, I, don't, I, I think that's kind of, you know, the word hater, I don't really like that, to be honest with you, but uh, they do fall under that category, and that, that's what's happened, that really happened to me, because I built momentum, and, and picked up speed, and, and, and pursued my dream, and, and now I'm in a financial position that I can. Um, so what would you do if those friends came back? What would you do? Because, you know, once you're like, oh, made it, you know, I'm here, and they want to kind of creep back up, what would you do? I don't, somebody asked me that question, and I don't have an answer. Don't let the door hit you on the way out. <laughs> because, like I said, you're going to meet, you're going to meet the same people going up as you're coming back down. So if they're not going to support you in the beginning, the hell with them. Yeah. Yeah. I guess you're right. And you know what? I'm going to share a little secret with you. Um, someone did try to, they, I guess they found out uh, where I'm at. And I'm able to produce some films now. And we're ready to rock. Um, kind of reached out, text, like, hi. I'm like, gosh, I haven't heard from you. We had a falling out, you know. Um, this person hired me to write and never paid me. We'll just leave it at that. And that was my fault because I didn't establish a credit, the, the, the contract, which you should always do. But I was young and everything sounded wonderful. And I guess I'm old fashioned, you know, uh, my word is my honor. Yep. You know, thing, but I guess you don't, you can't do that anymore nowadays. Uh, and I, I guess I'm still a pure person and a good person, and, and I believe in a handshake and a fist bump. I, I, that's just me. But I know we can't do that anymore sometimes with good people. I know I could do that with you. I know I could do that with you, but some people you just can't. So this person comes back on board, reaches out, and I'm like, oh, wow, I'm shocked you're reaching out. And, oh, I hear you're doing, you know, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, yes, I am. Thank you. Yes, I am. Wanted to come back on board, didn't pay me, stole my work, and wanted to work with me. Shock, right? I was like, I, and I wanted to say that, don't let the door hit you, but I didn't. <laughs> I said, I don't think so. Um, I'm in a, uh, I, I'm sorry, I've already made my connections. Uh, we're not going to be able to work. I already have my team, but uh, I, I wish you the best. I did say that. That person got really ugly with me. Um, saying, texting mean things, emailing mean things, and I, I, I just, it's amazing, it's actually amazing how people really get ugly on you, I had to block that person, I had to block them, isn't that terrible? Well, you know what karma is. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, oh my god, you're right, <laughs> I, yeah, karma went knock knock to him. <laughs> <laughs> so the next question I was going to ask you is, Based on everything you read about me and saw about me, how does that fall into the next category I'm going to talk to you about? Your screenwriting and your films. Do you think I would be a good person to work with or a good subject to work with? Oh, you'd be excellent. You know, you would be excellent. No, seriously. I have, uh, so I write all genres. And uh, and that's another thing I want to um to put out there and project because when you're a stand-up comedian and if you google me uh, you'll see a lot of my photos with other comedians and, and it says oh you know I, I performed here you'll see pictures you know that getty images and all that and I was being uh, kind of locked into 
you're just a comedian. You can only write comedy. And I wanted to express that I, I don't. I have my imagination can go beyond that. So I, I do. I have, uh, we're going to film a, a comedy, a, a drama, a suspense, and a, a, a psychological thriller. I don't do uh, blood and guts. Well, maybe a little bit. But, you know, I do. Because <laughs> people need that excitement. But, and that jump scare kind of thing. But um, I, that's what I'm expressing. And I would love to write a short story with you and about you. Would you let me? No, absolutely. I look forward to it. Mm, exciting. <laughs> and then you pick who you want to act for you. <laughs> that would be awesome. <laughs> or I can always act myself. Oh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> now, we're wrapping up. I do have a couple questions for you off the air. But I always ask... Um, the fun questions. So I always throw one curveball in there because I always like to stand out. When you were younger, did you ever get the chance to do one of those human pyramids or are you not into the whole human pyramid thing? No, I never did that. Again, I was so strict. I My mother put me in a box so she didn't want me to get injured. Could I play the piano? <laughs> I One time I snuck out and we I played a sport, what, flag trip football. Yeah. I tripped. And I sprained uh, two of my fingers, I guess, you know, and I couldn't, I couldn't enter the uh, piano competition. Ooh, did I get in trouble? Because <laughs> we were signed up for this competition, and so no, I could never, ever, ever do anything fun like that. I love that stuff. I'm a loser. Oh no, you're not. That's fun. That's living life. That's. That's excitement. That's, you know, I didn't get to do that. Well, maybe you can help me out one day. Yeah, okay. <laughs> now, I do have a couple of questions while you're wrapping up. Now, the first one I'm going to ask you is, how can people follow you on social media? Are you on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn? How can people follow you? Oh, well, I'm on uh, Instagram is public and my Twitter is public. And my Instagram is Terry the storyteller so it'd be like terry underscore the underscore storyteller and then uh at twitter it's just that that little at sign and then my name gilboy terry well you don't really need to put the at sign you just type the name in but you know some oh, people the, do do oh, the at sign it challenge <laughs> <laughs> Now, my last question for you, wrapping up, and I do have a couple questions for you off the air. Okay. When I first approached you to be a guest on my talk show, what was your honest first reaction when you got my invite? What, what made you say yes? And how do you feel now? Would you recommend it to other people? When you approached me, I, I, I was flattered. Truly, I was flattered. I'm like, whoa, who? I'm like, wait a minute. Who's this? <laughs> So, of course, I'm all, let me look at Keith. I'm like, oh, my God, you represent such a fantastic message. I said, oh, my, to be a part of this? Yes. Oh, my gosh. I, I was truly flattered. And then when I really looked into your work and what you were doing, what you represented, it really, it really enlightened me. It really did. It really made me think even further outside of the box and... And my imagine went, imagination went everywhere. I do support it fully. And yeah. I, I'm so flattered that, I, that you picked me. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's a good message, good cause. Turning myself into an example to show you that labels don't dictate who you are and who you're going to be. And I'm just hope that's good enough for people. Just turn myself into an example. Yes. No. It is. We'll get, we'll get the word out. And what you're doing, you'll get the word out. I love it. No, absolutely. Now, I do have a couple questions for you off the air about wrapping up. It was a real honor and privilege having oh. you as a guest, and I'm looking forward to part two down the road. Okay. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs>